Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation for all solutions, real and complex. So this question in and of itself may not look very interesting. I, I know some of you are saying like I can do this with my eyes closed because it's fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and take a look at the usual scenario, the real deal, and then we're going to check if there's any complex solutions. All right, so 2 root 2 is basically 2 times the square root of 2, and square root of 2 can be written as 2 to the power 1 half. Therefore, this product can be written as 2 to the power 3 halves. And as you should know, hopefully you do, 16 is 2 to the 4th power. If you don't, keep writing 2's and multiply until you get to 16. All right, so now let's go ahead and replace these numbers with their counterparts, 2 to the power 3 halves, and that is going to be raised to the power x. And then 16 is 2 to the 4th, and that's going to be raised to the power x plus 1. Great. So that looks simple, right? I mean, once you do that conversion, now you can go ahead and use the properties, multiply these exponents, 2 to the power 3 halves of x. And then this is 2 to the power 4x plus 4 by using the distributive property. And the rest is fairly straightforward, isn't it? Just set the exponents equal to each other. Check that the bases are not 1, 0, or negative 1. They're not. They're 2s. So the exponents must be equal. I'm going to start with this because that's a bigger x. 4x plus 4 equals 3 over 2x. Great. Now, how do you solve for this problem? Subtract 3 halves of x from both sides. So it's going to look like this. And then subtract 4, and you get a negative 4. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator or multiply everything by 2, which is better. Same thing. And then you get this. And then obviously this means 5x is negative 8. And that means x is equal to negative 8 over 5. Some people like decimals. Okay, here we go. We write it as negative 1.6. Okay, cool. So that seems to be the real solution. And that is the only real solution to this equation. But here's the important question. Are there any complex solutions? And how do we find them if there is any? So let's go ahead and pick it up from here. We have, actually this one is probably switched around. I want to switch it around, if you don't mind. I'm going to go ahead and switch these. So that gives me 2 to the power 4x plus 4 is equal to 2 to the power 3 halves of x. Now, to find some complex solutions, I'd like to get 1 on one side. How can I do that? By way of division. Let's divide both sides by 2 to the power 3 halves of x, 2 to the power 3 halves of x. This is going to give us 1. Cool. And here we are supposed to what? Subtract exponents. Yes. Let's go ahead and do it. 2 to the power 4x plus 4 minus 3 halves of x equals 1. This should be fairly easy because we already did that, right? Here we don't have that luxury of multiplying everything by 2. We kind of do, but I don't want to do it. Let's make a common denominator and write this as 8x plus 8 minus 3x, which is going to be 5x plus 8. And then that's divided by 2 right? Like this. And then that is equal to 1. Now, to find complex solutions, I'm going to write 1 as a complex number in polar form. But not only that, I'm also going to write 2 as a complex number in polar form. So that's going to be fun. And let's see how this goes. So 2 is e to the power ln 2. Remember that. And remember Euler's formula. It is e to the power i alpha is cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. So any complex number pretty much can be written like that. Okay, so replace 2 with that. And what are we going to do with it? 1. But if you think about the coordinate system, 1 appears here. Its argument is just 0 or 2 pi or 4 pi or just multiples of 2 pi, right? You can basically write it as 2 pi n. So let's go ahead and do this. 1 can be written as e to the power 2 pi n, but of course you also have to multiply by i because this is alpha and we have to have i alpha. Make sense? All right. So if you're wondering how these uh, formulas are derived or where they come from, you can go ahead and check out the lecture notes on the other channel, which is called A plus BI. Commercial break. Okay, let's get back to work. So now we're going to replace 2 with that, e to the ln 2, raise it to the power 5x plus 8 over 2, and then 1 replace with e to the power 2 pi n i. Wait a minute, we're missing an i here, right? Where is the i? There is no i. Well, there doesn't have to be an i because the left hand side, as you know, is kind of like a real valued expression, but aren't I supposed to write 2 as a complex number? 
Well, here's the thing. If you write e to the power ln 2, then this should be this should give you the value you're looking for. Right? Okay. Anyways, so let's continue. We're going to multiply the exponents, so that's going to give us something like this. That's kind of messy. I don't know how to write it, but let's just write it as ln 2 times 5x plus 8 over 2 equals e to the power 2 pi and i. And don't worry, we'll get to ln 2 in a little bit. Now, since both sides are equal, the exponents are equal, you can just also log both sides and you're going to get the same result, right? So this is going to come up from here, ln 2 times 5x plus 8 over 2 equals 2 pi and i. And remember, our goal is to solve for x. So what should I do? I need to isolate the x. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by ln 2. That gives us 2 pi n i divided by ln 2. And now we're going to kind of solve for x. So let's go ahead and cross multiply, or I should probably just multiply both sides by 2 first. And then that's going to give me 2, 4 pi n i divided by ln 2. And then subtract 8. And then finally divide by 5, and we should be good to go. Okay, anyways, let's me, let me make a common denominator first, and then I'm going to divide by 5. So it's going to give me 8 ln 2, divide by ln 2. And finally, if you divide by 5, uh-oh, that was kind of like weird. And let's go back, ln 2. And we're going to divide by 5, so that's going to bring the 5 here. Okay? So that's the x value which is kind of interesting, right? And we kind of need to look at it in a different way too. So for example, if n is equal to zero, from here you get x equals negative eight ln two divided by five ln two, ln two cancels out and you end up with negative eight over five, which is the real solution. Where is that? I just lost it. Okay, it should be with the first method, yes. Okay, so that is the real value, but we're interested in a more general case, which is complex solutions. So that seems to be the solution. And obviously you can write it uh, in so many different ways, like you can separate the real part, deal, uh, so you can write it as negative 8 over 5, which is the real part, the real solution, plus 4 pi n over 5 ln 2 times i, or some people will put the i before the imaginary part. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.